this is an out of focus box for the Melee Quieter uh, 4C. And it's a fanless PC. It's tiny. It features the Intel N150 or N100. I've got the N100 variety. And I've decided to do something, to do something, I'm just gonna leave it in. I've decided to do something absurd. I've got an N100 with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. Why on earth would I take something that only has four of the efficiency cores and throw 32 gigabytes on there? Well, there's a reason for that. I'll you know, just tell you right now. I don't have to be like, wait, you gotta watch the video. You better watch till the end. I'll tell you right now because that's how I do, do things here. It's because Docker containers, virtual machines, and just Proxmox stuff gone wild. You can over provision because you're generally not gonna be using all the stuff. If you're using it for a home server and you've got like a you know, pie hole on there, wiki, maybe some, you know, spin up some whatever file servers, maybe even Jellyfin or something without too much encoding because that it, Intel integrated graphics is not too crazy. You can do all that and more at the same time because the RAM is the most important. You can have all kinds of stuff readily accessible for the CPU to crunch on. So you could do that. You could also run like web caching servers and with all that amount of RAM, you can even use a piece of the RAM for web cache. That's not what we're gonna do in this video. Did I scare you out of your chair? I'm sorry. In this video, I'm just gonna talk about how it is and how it performs. And I'm gonna do all the same tests that I do for all the mini PCs. So you can look at this and say, okay, is it worth having a super quiet mini PC at this price? You know, is it, is it gonna be worth it? Or should I go with one of the other ones? And you can look at the difference between this one and the other ones that I've done in previous videos. Before we do that, look at all my beautiful games. This is my PC game collection, but it's also a whole bunch of shirts that I'm gonna be doing for 80, I don't know, 70, 80% off. Also the hardware and the mouse pads, use coupon code Happy Hardware, and you'll get 50% off that. I'm trying to clear up the shelves as much as possible. Now these prices are only gonna be for the stuff I have here on the shelf. There's a few things that are print on demand, like this one. Those prices will not be changing, but you can go on there and grab just all kinds of t-shirts. I've got all kinds of good stuff left over there. I want more room for my games. Now, you're gonna to have to pay a little bit of shipping, but if you grab multiple things, maybe some hardware, maybe some of these, well, that's gonna help a lot. Also, I've got a bunch of games I'm not taking with me, and some of them I've just got duplicates of. They're actually really good games. So I'll throw some of those into the boxes if you order a few things and there's extra room in the box and it doesn't like, you know, cost me an extra several dollars. I'll throw some games in there. So I'll be giving away that. And I'm also going to be giving away random just stuff from the office that I don't need, little bits of hardware. And then the more premium hardware, I'm gonna put on the used category over here. If you just come to epicpants.com and scroll down the page about halfway, you'll see there's a, a used category. I got microphones, handheld consoles, got a few copies of Windows on here. Look at that Windows 98 sealed in the box. The idea is I take care of you with some good sale prices and you take care of me by getting this stuff off my shelf so I have a little more room. Head over to epicpants.com and now on to our regularly scheduled program. This is the way I have it configured right here. The N100 with 32 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes uh, with the M.2. So the Intel N100, it's four cores, four threads. They're all efficiency cores, meaning this is gonna just barely sip on the power. It does like seven watts. That's it, just needs seven watts of power. Um, it goes up to 3.4 gigahertz. So the memory that they're reporting is um, DDR4 and uh, the one I, that says eight to 16 gigabytes. But the one that I have, let me just hop over to hardware info and make sure of this because I feel like I'm going crazy now looking at their specs. Um, it says DDR5. So I'm not gonna rely too much on their website. Let's just go through the specs here. Four cores, four threads. Yeah, we covered that. Six megabytes L3 cache, and then 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory, according to hardware info. And then we've got our UHD graphics sharing 16 gigabytes. It's basically just sharing half of this, uh, half of the system memory. Luckily it's DDR5, so it's fast and safe and all that stuff. So there's the specs there. If you want to just look on, you know, look over here at the motherboard. It's Elder Lake, there we go, all that stuff. I'm just gonna click around a little bit. Cast latency, look at that, 52, 44, 44, 104. And for the drives, that 512 gigabyte SSD is an air disk. All right, let's go through the ports on the physical unit, shall we? Not a lot of crazy stuff going on in the front. And then you got nothing but a power button on the front. Flipping it around on one side, you have a Kensington lock. And then on the other, we have USB uh, 3.2, it's five gigabits per second. Then we have another USB 3.2, 10 gigabits per second. So I think it's Gen 1, Gen 2 there. And then we have USB 2, and that's uh, 480 megabits per second, which is nice for your peripherals and stuff. On the far left right there, we have USB-C, and that supports power delivery 3.0. 
and you can you know hook up power daisy chain power i guess dust data transfer it's also display port 1.4 so you can run uh, a 4k 60 hertz monitor up to 4k 60 hertz and then beside that we have our little headphone microphone combo port to hdmi 2.0 and those do 4k 60 hertz as well and then we have our usb-c for power input beyond that we have one gigabit ethernet port i think um if we had two on here it would be a different device entirely so maybe i should look at one of their units that has two but as it stands we got one right there so it's visa mountable and that's probably going to be important to some people so there's just four screws and then you just kind of pop the top off it's really just like removing the heat sink from the core components and you'll see there's a thermal pad in there and a bit of metal just to make sure that everything uh, makes contact and there's also a thermal pad like there's one over by the m.2 but there's also a thermal pad that makes contact with the back of the pcb and that's the back side of where the the core is going to be so that's kind of interesting that's how it works they're just a piece of metal and a and a thermal pad and then that's attached to this back plate that's basically a giant heat sink that gets pretty warm to the touch during you know all your all my testing and stuff or whenever you're doing something really crazy but not that hot like it's like they there's a little sticker on there that's like warning it's gonna get hot okay maybe it'll get hot enough to be like oh no i touched it and i wasn't expecting that but it's not like ow it burned me hot it's just oh it's hot don't be that way just pick it up and be like yes i like hot things don't you you're watching me. All right, so we're going to test this thing out. I'm going to try to play a whole bunch of games on it because that's what I do with everything. And then after that, we'll talk about other things other than Windows that you could do with this because this comes with Windows 11 Pro. And I think you should probably grab it without an operating system. I think it's kind of goofy to put Windows on something like this, but you can do whatever you want. If you wanted something really inexpensive to smack behind your monitor and run Office programs, then you got it. For a lot of us with 32 gigabytes of RAM, 8 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, maybe Windows, but 32 gigabytes, no, we're going to run VMs and Docker containers and all kinds of things, right? Anyway, let's go ahead and test it out. And then we'll talk about, you know, where this stacks up and how important the you know the silence is for you because there are uh, other options out there that have fans that might be in different price points and stuff but you know this stuff still has uh, really premium build quality even compared to a lot of that so i've been looking forward to beyond the sunset for a long time so thank you hellforge studios for putting this together this is kind of a cyberpunk samurai thing going on it's a doom wad that's made into a full game but it's got so much going on uh, not sure if we'll be able to play it on this system i'm going to turn the fxaa off you know and i'm going to turn down the, the filters and stuff you can play through the tutorial area right here you can see you got your samurai sword i'm just skipping around in the video here to make it easier for myself to edit if you're wondering why you can see the the bar on the bottom i don't have time right now anyway uh yeah this is the training area so you got your katana and that will deflect the stuff that's coming at you or you can use it to like just run in and hit people one of the things that's kind of cool about this is the movement reminds me a lot of modern games namely um doom eternal and that's because you have the dash and you have the double jump and you can get around that way. And then also another thing that reminds me of Doom Eternal is when enemies die, they usually drop stuff. See on the ground there, all that ammo and geez, I'm getting eaten alive right here, but all that ammo and everything just kind of dropped on the ground. So that's kind of cool. Oh, this, yes. <laughs> this is how they teach you how to use the map. I'm, uh, yeah, <laughs> this. They're like, learn how to use a map. And then they give you this. So that's probably the best map tutorial in the history of map tutorials. And that should give you an idea of how the real game is going to be. They got some really nice pixel art as well. And then once you get into it, you're going to have quests and stuff. Need to find the man in the pink suit and remove his right hand. Yes, that's the kind of quest I'm looking for. I feel like it's got a little bit of Deus Ex mixed in there as well, but not so much. But one of the craziest Doom wads that I've ever seen. And uh, it's probably a little bit too much for this machine when you have all the effects on like the rain and everything else. Some areas will work just fine. But check out Beyond the Sunset. It's really freaking cool. All right, let's try out a little bit of Shantae right here. This is Shantae in the uh, Seven Sirens. And you know what? I thought it was going to work. Yeah, once we get outside, you can see it's crawling a little bit. It's a little bit stuttery. So no, it can't handle this game. All right, so speaking of 2D games, uh, Silk Song, it actually works. Just turn down the background blur, put that on the low setting. And whatever other settings you can, just put them on low. When you go outside and there's tons of light sources, and in areas like this where there's a lot of light sources, you might notice the frame rate drops a little bit below 30. But, so yeah, if you want to play Silk Song and 
Trust me, you don't. Unless you do. <laughs> if you've played Hollow Knight, then you can play Silk Song. If you have not, then you're not allowed to play it. It's You'll be too frustrated. You're going to be frustrated. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. You know, Silk Song is beautiful, and I was absolutely surprised and shocked that it ran this well on this N100 based machine. All right, it's time to try some emulation. First thing I want to do is try a PSP game, because that'll kind of give me an idea of what we can and can't do with this machine. And PSP games, this is Brandish right here, which is a really weird, uh, let me just skip a little bit forward so you can see the movement system. It's a really weird grid based game. It works a lot better on the, the PSP than it did on the Super Nintendo, but yeah, PSP games are working just fine. I forgot how to play this, but yeah, so weird how you, you always just behind the character and then you turn the screen with L and R. It's an interesting system and it feels very old school and I kind of like it. So anyway, that's Brandish. It works just fine. Let's try some GameCube. Now I've not played this, so don't judge me. This is the one Mario Kart game that I haven't played. But what I want to show you right here is that we're playing GameCube. This is Mario Kart Double Dash and running it through. Um, I'm actually running this through RetroArch. So it's, that's another thing. It's it's running. It would run better if I was just running Dolphin natively, but I'm running Dolphin inside RetroArch. And we're able to play some GameCube games on this. I think you're going to run into some trouble in some of the games that have tons of fog and stuff. But Dolphin allows you to go in and turn off the fog. So... Yeah, you can play GameCube games on this N100. That's kind of kind of wild. So this will be an emulation beast. It should be able to emulate uh, uh, better than Raspberry Pis and stuff. There's a lot of creepy pastas floating around out there. I don't know anything about this one. So I said yes to accepting this game. I have no idea what it's about. But I said, hey, I'll take a look at it. All right, there we go. Password. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted to take a look at it. So I was like, oh, yeah, I'll take a look at this. Got new mail. What is What is this game even called? a uh, smile dog yes i know what i'm playing <laughs> but th this is what when i you know have a system that's not crazy fast this is what i want to play all right smile dog.exe let's download this i don't know what i'm playing right now do you know about the smile dog creepypasta because i don't what if it's awful and i'm uh, over here like talking about something awful all right so i downloaded that what's this installer This is all dog stuff. This is getting weird. All right, so yeah, stuff like this will play. These goofy little psychological games, they'll play just fine. Right, let's take a look at Valley. Now, this is not like a AAA gaming machine, but I want to, you know, run this test so that you can run these tests on whatever other computers you've got and maybe get a low score, but you'll be able to put it beside this one and just see how it does. Uh, the FPS, 13.1 was the average. Score, 549. Minimum, 8.1. Then when it comes to superposition, we got a score of 648 with an average of 4.85 and the minimum of 3.96. All right, let's take a look at Cinebench. Now, this is not something I'm going to be using for, you know, like crazy rendering or whatever, but you can see here the individual core, just a single core, not that bad. I mean, especially for the money. So the M100 comes in, uh, you know, down here by the old Xeon x5650 that's kind of funny it's these zeons were crazy back in the day and now yeah and a little like a two-thirds as fast as the older thread rippers so it can get stuff done on the single core which is nice for a little bit of burst of speed when it comes to the multi-core score there we go down there at the bottom it's not really made for you know 3d rendering and stuff so i just do this test as a benchmark so you can see what it looks like 1006 on the multi-core and 596 on the single core. All right, we'll take a look at Geekbench now. Our single core score in Geekbench is 929 and our multi-core is 2120. I'll scroll down and let you just look at all the individual tests. Stop if you need to see something in particular, like Clang. Uh, how many 15, 22 clients? Yeah. When it comes to the OpenCL performance, we're looking at a score of 3243. The individual tests, right there they are. Take a look. We're using ADA64 to do a stress test, and it's been running for over 30 minutes, as you can see here. Our temperatures, right around 70. The top was 76. This is great. You can see there's the, the distance to TJ Maxx. So, yeah, it's completely fine. And it's not even worth measuring the, you know, the audio because 
it's it's quiet. It's completely silent. Go ahead and stop this test. You can run this thing at 100% all day. The outer case does get a little bit warm to the touch, but I'm able to pick it up right now. It's fine. It's just really warm, but it's not going to burn you. All right, let's take a look at the M.2 that they put in there, the 512 uh, gigabyte M.2. Our read is 3398 and our write is 2864. Let's take a look at the IOPS. Not that. There we go. IOPS. We've got 73,000 for the read and 38,000 for the write. So these are like pretty decently average PCI Express Gen 3-ish speeds. 38 is a little bit low here for the write, so the write's not going to be quite as quick as the read, but I think it's fine for a small PC like this. I mean, obviously, you can swap it out for something faster if you wanted to, but that's what it comes with. As far as the temperatures go, let's go ahead and take a look at our smart information down here. And you can see we peaked out at 57 degrees. So that stays cool as well. There is a thermal pad on there with some metal on top. So it's all just using the, the, the case, which is a heat sink. It's just like a little heat sink. And it's doing a very good job. 57 degrees is not that hot. It's not crazy fast. So maybe that also helps keep the temperatures low. But this is completely fine. And for a home server or something, I think this is going to be okay. All right, so can you watch uncompressed 4K movies on this? And I'm skipping around right here. I'm, so you got, I'm playing Ghost in the Shell. This is the original Ghost in the Shell from 1995, and this is the Blu-ray copy. It's been dropped over to MKV, but it's not compressed. This is 40 gigabytes, and it's I'm skipping around just fine. And let's get this iconic scene going, shall we? So yeah, you can totally watch uncompressed massive 4k videos on this so if you want to run jellyfin or whatever else by all means so i really wanted to see how this little n100 would do with 4k footage so i've got some drone footage here that hutch took randomly just wandering around it's very pretty yes is, isn't that very pretty so we got all this drone footage here i'm just going to see how this works scrubbing around on the timeline is just fine there's the color uh, i guess what they call that the color histogram i don't know. i'm going to try a cross dissolve over here just to see how much it stutters i do expect it to stutter a tiny bit just because that's the nature of these things. There we go. Did it work? All right, let's go ahead and play this back and just see how it looks here. Yeah, the cross dissolve was just fine. You can actually edit 4K video on this. All right, let's put it up on 4K. Scrubbing around over here too. Let's just open this up. Yeah. Yeah, this works. You can edit 4K video on this. I wouldn't go crazy with layers and effects, but it'd be okay for just a, a basic editing machine. When looking at these mini PCs, it's all about like, what do you need? What are you doing with it? So like I said, for me, I would probably install Proxmox or a version of Linux that has all kinds of containers. Maybe, I don't know, something like Portainer or what's that uh, uh, distro that just nothing but containers. Someone in the comments will tell me, but yeah, I would probably install something like that, but you can even run Kubernetes or something. So I think for people who are into that and they want something that's quiet, that's the other thing is you, you have to kind of need the silence because I think you're paying for the build quality and the silence. Mm -hmm. 